the real meaning of the zodiac. Or perhaps we would call it, as I did, the gospel in the stars. D. James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. Well, it's Christmas time, but what does that really matter? Jesus was a man, he was born, he died a terrible death of crucifixion, and he was resurrected. And how do we know the Christmas story is true? And so this idea that, oh, well, who knows what Paul originally wrote in his letters, or who knows what the gospel writers originally said about Jesus, there's no foundation for that kind of skepticism. Discover the solid historical basis for Christmas, as well as how the constellations in the night sky proclaim the gospel, all on today's Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. As Christmas approaches and as we move toward the end of 2018, I want to make a special appeal to you today to help us finish 2018 in the black able to move into 2019 in a strong position so that we can bring biblical truth to bear on a fraying culture. Some generous friends of this ministry have established a Proclaim the Gospel Matching Challenge Fund. Their goal is to encourage you to donate generously to help us in our vital mission to proclaim the gospel boldly and effectively making a real and lasting impact on the trajectory of our nation. Please contact us right away to give a generous donation, which will essentially have double the impact at this crucial time. And we have some outstanding resources to thank you with that will show you how the stars in the sky proclaim the gospel message, which we'll tell you more about later in the program. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free, 877-962-7677. Or you can go online to djkm.org. As we celebrate the advent of Jesus Christ at Christmas time, Skeptics abound in magazine stories and TV documentaries, and attacks on the reliability of the Bible are nothing really new, but we see the same arguments endlessly packaged and repackaged for new audiences. Dr. Sam Lamerson is president and professor of New Testament at Knox Theological Seminary, and he joins me now to discuss our confidence in the story presented in the Gospels. Sam, thanks for being here. Well, it's my pleasure. Always, for always good to have you. Thanks. Now, one of the arguments that skeptics lay against the Christian church, lay against the Bible, is it's just another example of how different civilizations produce their own mythologies, the Greco-Roman, the uh, whatever other uh, we, we might want to focus on. But the Bible is uniquely different than all of those stories that appear in other cultures. In, wh in what way is it different? Well, in the first place, the stories of Jesus were written by eyewitnesses. Mm -hmm. And there are many non-evangelical non scholars today who will grant that, yes, those stories of Jesus were written by eyewitnesses. So that's the first thing. They're not written 100 or 150 right. years later. They're written virtually at the time that they happen. The, the second thing is that they were written very close to the time in which the events happen. Mm -hmm. So it's not eyewitnesses waiting until they're, they're senile. It's eyewitnesses writing sometimes 10 or 15 years after the event had happened. Right. And so that's important. And it's important to realize that the, the New Testament itself claims to be a historical document. The Apostle Paul says, if Jesus wasn't really raised from the dead, then we are of all men most hopeless. We are of all people 
terribly hopeless because we've bought into what was a big lie. Right. And Paul, who lived virtually at the same time as Jesus, who may have seen Jesus in Jerusalem when he was a young man, right, right. he says the most important thing that we can recognize is that Jesus was a man, he was born, he died a terrible death of crucifixion, and he was resurrected. That these are the center points, so to speak, of history. All of history was pointed to the birth, death, and resurrection of Christ, and everything after it is shaped by it. Is that how we should look at it? That's right. And the resurrection is, without question, the most important miracle of the entire Bible because it shows us that Jesus was who he said he was, that he did what he said he was going to do, that he's not like the many other people who claim to be the Messiah during that time. He is the one who suffered crucifixion, was dead, buried, and then rose again. And it's because of that resurrection that we, whenever we, for instance, celebrate uh, communion at church. We celebrate communion. We're celebrating the death of the founder of our religion. We're celebrating the death of our God who became man. Right. No other religion celebrates the death of their, their hero. We can, though, because of the resurrection. I, I happen to think the greatest Christmas movie ever made is Charlie Brown Christmas because for all the other ones that are so appealing, the, the clearest presentation of the gospel is in that little uh, Peanuts uh, Christmas movie, 28 minutes long. Exactly, and you find the Gospel of Luke, the birth narrative from the Gospel of Luke being read, and one of the, the great overarching themes of Luke's Gospel is that the Christ came for those who were outside, for the poor, and for the oppressed, and for those that the religious leaders didn't want in the church or the synagogue at that time, and yet Christ comes and he offers the gospel to all of those that are outside, just like Charlie Brown. And Linus corrects to all the pundits of our day that always wax eloquently about peace on earth and goodwill to men, because he says the good news is that unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior. That's the good news of the, that is. Of the Scriptures. Sam, Thank thanks for being with thank us. You. Always a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks so much. What better way to appreciate the night sky than with a stunning illustration of the stars and constellations, accompanied by biblical descriptions of how each one proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ. D. James Kennedy Ministries presents, for the first time, the exclusive Gospel Planisphere. This one-of-a-kind planisphere folds out to poster size and shows how, contrary to pagan astrology, God placed the zodiac in the heavens to proclaim the story of redemption. Contact us today to receive the Gospel Planisphere, a fold-out guide to the gospel in the stars that can only be obtained through D. James Kennedy Ministries. Despite all of the attacks from skeptics on the reliability of the Bible, the gospel narratives stand strong as the best examples of reliable history written in all of antiquity. But did you know that the story written in the New Testament is also written in the stars above? My very good friend Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy, the daughter of Dr. D. James Kennedy, now joins me. Jennifer, one of the most fascinating message series your dad ever preached was on this subject. Do you remember when they were preached in the church? I do. And people were astonished to learn that the gospel message can be seen clearly in the night sky. Yeah. My father was a brilliant man, and he never stopped studying God's truth in the scriptures and in the world around him. One of his discoveries became a hallmark in his ministry, and it remains one of the most fascinating things my dad ever did. He knew that, as the Bible says, the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. That message, my dad discovered, is proclaimed in the constellations of the zodiac. To be clear, he absolutely rejected pagan astrology, which is a perversion of the truth. He would have nothing to do with horoscopes and divination, which the Bible forbids. But God placed the stars in the sky himself, and when looked at rightly, the display is the most important message that we can ever receive. 
Here's my dad, Dr. D. James Kennedy, with a portion of the first of 13 messages he preached on this intriguing topic called The Gospel in the Stars. The first chapter of the Bible tells us that God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and he made the stars also. And we're also told in that same first chapter this, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Now. Does one of those seem out of place? It should be obvious to everyone with a modicum of knowledge about astronomy that the heavenly bodies have a great deal to say about our years, about our days, and about our seasons. But how are they signs? What is a sign? A sign is something which proclaims a message. You put up a signboard, you do it to proclaim a message. Uh, what is the message that is proclaimed by the stars above? Well, that is the subject of our investigation this morning. I'm going to be talking to you about what might be called biblical astrology. Now, that is certainly a rare connection of words. Biblical astrology, or perhaps the real meaning of the zodiac. Or perhaps we would call it, as I did, the gospel in the stars. Let us then look briefly at a few of the, the pictures of the zodiac. And for those of you that may never have looked at this matter at all, and fortunately, because of its, con of its corruptions and its satanic aspects, it's well that you have nothing to do with modern astrology whatsoever. But in order that you might appreciate what God has done, let me just tell you something about it, what it's like. If you paint the whole picture of the sky on the ceiling above, you would have a great circle, which is called the ecliptic, the ecliptic of the sun. Now, on the ecliptic, there are 12 major constellations known as the constellations of the zodiac or the signs of the zodiac. Zodiac is thought to mean the circle of animals, though better uh, linguists say that it comes from an ancient Hebrew word which means actually a path or step, that it actually is displaying the way that is the way of salvation. Let's begin then with Virgo. Virgo is a picture of a woman, and this woman is clearly identified as a virgin, even the name of the constellation, Virgo the Virgin, from Latin. She holds in her right hand a branch, and in her left hand some sheaths of corn or wheat seeds or barley seeds various interpretations given of that. And we see that, of course, it is the seed of the woman, that is, the virgin who will conceive and bring forth a child, as Isaiah tells us, behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, that her seed will produce this. And furthermore, a branch. We read in Zechariah, for behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. And in Zechariah 6.12, behold the man whose name is the branch. And then in Isaiah 4.2, the branch of Jehovah shall blossom prosperously. That he is the servant, he is a man, he is God. He is the man God's servant, Jesus, who has come. I hope that as you go out on a given night and look up at the glories of the starry sky, that you will be more impressed than ever with the greatness and wonder of our God and the majesty of His grace and mercy. The good news announced even in the heavens above is that the seed of the woman will destroy the seed of the serpent and save His people. 
This prophecy was first announced in Genesis chapter 3 and was fulfilled in Christ as his death and resurrection defeated sin and Satan, securing the salvation of those who trust in him. In just a few minutes, we will tell you how you can obtain all of these amazing messages from Dr. Kennedy on the gospel in the stars. And we will show you an absolutely stunning gospel planisphere that graphically illustrates the story of salvation in the constellations. To some, this amazing story of Christ's advent sounds like a myth from antiquity. But today, even skeptical archaeologists and scholars are discovering how much more reliable the New Testament is than they ever knew before. It is truly the best attested and most trustworthy book of antiquity. Our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb has more. Has Jesus been misquoted? How good are the manuscripts on which the New Testament is based? Some have said that the text has been deliberately changed. We're going to look at the actual texts that survive from antiquity, and we're going to talk to the experts who know best. Join us on our quest for the fragments of truth. Dr. Craig Evans, a professor at Houston Theological Seminary, hosts a new documentary called Fragments of Truth, which deals with the issue of the New Testament manuscripts. Here are some scenes from this powerful new film. Some scholars have alleged that the scribes who copied the New Testament changed the text substantially, whether unintentionally or intentionally. Their mistakes obscured the readings of the original text to the point where we no longer know what the original writers wrote in the Gospels. That's a very serious allegation against the reliability of the New Testament. Essentially, that scribes supposedly changed the texts. The film documents how such an allegation has no basis in fact. Some have, have charged that Christian scribes at first were barely literate, well-meaning Christians and not professional scribes. People often ask questions about how reliable the New Testament is, not just in what it reports, but do we actually even have the New Testament as it was originally written? So some people say, for example, well, there may have been a nice, pristine early version of the Gospel of Mark, but hasn't it been sort of souped up and beefed up over the centuries? Hasn't Jesus been turned uh, from a, an innocent Jewish rabbi into someone who claims to forgive sin? Well, one of the problems with this theory is that we're very, very hard pressed to find any manuscript where we can see that a scribe has, with any consistency at all, changed the text, whether in an orthodox direction or indeed in an unorthodox direction. Manuscripts, of course, were copies made by hand. All copies of any writing, New Testament or otherwise, prior to the Gutenberg Press in 1456 had to be made by hand. Writing everything out by hand always introduces the possibility of variance, tiny variations from one text to another, such as spelling discrepancies. The vast majority of these variants cannot even be translated into English. The, the manuscripts we have of the New Testament, there's 5,700 manuscripts in Greek, there's over 10,000 in Latin. The other ancient versions, uh, Georgian, Armenian, uh, Syriac, Coptic, 99% of the variants that we have either cannot be translated or they don't make any, any difference. The New Testament contains several thousand lines of text. How many lines of text are possibly in question, and of those lines of text in question, what do we know about them? Text critic great Bruce Metzger remarked there were only 40 lines out of 20,000 where there was any doubt at all about how it should originally read. And those 40 lines don't involve one single significant Christian teaching. Recent archeological discoveries highlighted by the film Fragments of Truth prove that ancient papyri could survive for centuries instead of decades, which is what scholars previously held. And so this idea that, oh, well, who knows what Paul originally wrote in his letters, or who knows what the gospel writers originally said about Jesus, there's no foundation for that kind of skepticism. This has been commented on. Fred Wissey, longtime professor 
at Yale remarked one time that the stability of the Greek New Testament text is such that he considered it nothing less than a miracle. Over the centuries, the scriptures that proclaim the gospel story have held up through all manner of skeptical inquiry. And the scriptures record the story that God ordained the sending of his son to die for our sins. This is the majesty and the grace of Christmas. And the heavens above also proclaim this story where we see that God created the stars, numbered each one and ordered them in the heavens. And that divine ordering bears a powerful and unmistakable witness to the coming Christ. Friends, we have some unique and outstanding resources to enable you to see this more clearly. The first is this amazing gospel planisphere. Today, you heard Dr. Kennedy's powerful presentation on the gospel in the stars. And this fold-out poster-size planisphere beautifully illustrates the grand narrative of which Dr. Kennedy called the Proto-Evangelium, the first gospel. As you unfold this planisphere, you will be astonished by the clarity of the gospel message written in the constellations we see in the night sky above. With this remarkably helpful resource, you can easily explain the gospel message to someone else. There is simply nothing else like this available today. And you'll want to share it with your children and grandchildren. And it also makes a terrific homeschooling resource. We will send you this exclusive gospel planisphere as our thanks for your generous donation to this ministry. Your donations will help us finish 2018 in the black and be well positioned for the new year ahead. This gospel planisphere is not available anywhere else. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 877-962-7677, or go online to djkm.org. Some generous friends of this ministry have established the Proclaim the Gospel Matching Challenge Fund. So if you give right now to match their gift, the impact of your donation is virtually doubled. And if you're able to donate $50 or more, we will send you the incredible gospel planisphere plus Dr. Kennedy's revealing book, The Real Meaning of the Zodiac which fills in the true picture on how each constellation of the zodiac plays a part in demonstrating the gospel story, contrary to modern pagan astrology. And as our thanks for a donation of $100 or more, we'll send you the planisphere, the book, and Dr. Kennedy's 13 message set, The Gospel in the Stars, which is available on DVD or audio CD and includes messages on each sign of the Zodiac. These are the most requested messages Dr. Kennedy ever preached, and they are available to you now in this compelling package. So please consider giving a generous donation to help us defend truth and stand for freedom. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 877-962-7677, or go online to djkm.org. Christmas is a special time of the year as we consider the awesome grace of God in sending the very Prince of Peace for us. On the night of his birth, the angel proclaimed peace on earth and goodwill to those on whom his favor rests. Even though we see the world around us devastated by sin, Christmas 
is the shining reminder that God did not create it that way and that the coming of the Christ child was the beginning of the restoration of all things. In our nation, we seem to be standing at a historical juncture with political discord and violence not seen since the turbulent decade of the 1960s. Why now? What is the source of all these conflicts? C.S. Lewis was perhaps the greatest Christian writer of the 20th century. This is what he said about a seemingly chaotic world, and I quote, this universe is at war. It is a civil war, a rebellion. We are living in a part of the universe occupied by the rebel. Enemy occupied territory, that's what this world is. Christianity is the story of how the rightful king has landed, you might say landed in disguise, and is calling us all to take part in a great campaign of sabotage." End quote. What Lewis calls sabotage is our own stand for truth against the division and hatred wrought by the king of this world, Satan. One shining example of that truth lived out occurred during World War I at Christmas time on the great battlefields of Europe. For a few short hours, battle-weary men emerged from the trenches on both sides to acknowledge their common bond in the Christian faith. They sang Christmas carols together. They exchanged some modest gifts and even played a little soccer together. In the midst of great division, that is the unifying power of Christ. As Christians, we have the true hope that one day the reign of Christ the King will extend not only to the hearts of those who believe in him, but will extend to all the earth. And the whole world will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. When that happens, we will truly see peace on earth and goodwill to men. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Truths That Transform. We'll see you next time. Next week on Truths That Transform. Uh, Christians believe that these events took place not only by a blind, uninformed faith, but because they were historical facts. The virgin birth, I believe, is a fact. And not only a fact, but a foundational fact of our faith. That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.